in this sixth and final video for the very first online lesson for indirect taxation, we're going to be extending our knowledge of indirect taxes from demand and supply diagrams through to externality diagrams. Now, just a quick reminder, an externality is where there is an impact on a third party in a market. Now we're going to use indirect taxes to tackle negative effect. Remember, because indirect taxes reduce the quantity traded in a market and raise the price, we can use them to discourage behavior and discourage purchase of goods and services that we do not want people to buy as much of. So we're thinking here particularly about negative production externalities. Uh, and in just a moment, we'll take a look at um, negative consumption externalities and demerit goods. So in the diagram that we've got on the screen there on the left hand side, we have a fairly standard negative production externalities diagram. And you can see uh, looking at the red lines that the socially optimal equilibrium is where marginal social cost equals the marginal social benefit curve. And that gives us the equilibrium, the socially optimal equilibrium, Q star. Now remember with um, externalities, the people involved in the market do not take into account the impact on those third parties. They only think about the private costs. So in a free market, the equilibrium occurs where marginal private cost, MPC, equals the marginal social benefit. So that's where the equilibrium is P and Q. And you can see at the bottom of the screen there on that diagram, I've illustrated that level of overproduction when we do not have a tax. Now then, if we decide to introduce a tax, you can see what I've done there. In this case, I've kept it fairly simple. We have a unit tax or a specific tax. That means that the marginal private cost curve, which is effectively a supply curve, just shifts upwards by the amount of the tax. We've done a parallel shift. And that new line is labeled MPC plus tax. And so we end up in this case with our equilibrium at the socially optimal point. So just to pop some of those words on the screen for you, when there's negative production externalities, we have overproduction because marginal social cost is greater than marginal private cost. If we are able to set the tax correctly, then the MPC curve will shift up by the amount of the tax. And in theory, that results in the socially optimal level of production at Q star. And what we tend to say is that that means that the market failure has been corrected. Now that's all well and good in theory, but why in practice might it be quite difficult to set the tax at exactly the right level? Just an opportunity for you to stop and have a think. Um, we're not going to put any particular answers on the screen here. There are so many uh, things that you could be thinking about. For example, um, the fact that the impacts are on third parties and they're not accounted for in a market mechanism. We simply don't have any means of putting a value on them. Sometimes uh, information is lacking and we might not even know that these problems exist or they could occur in the future and it's very difficult to account for costs in the future thinking about today. So in reality, whilst we can of course solve this problem using an indirect tax, it's very, very difficult to do so in practice. And in lesson two on indirect taxes, we'll be taking a closer look at evaluating the impact of indirect taxes. Okay, so a little task for you to think about. Uh, draw a diagram illustrating a demerit good or one in which there is a negative consumption externality. Uh, for those of you who are taking Edexcel economics, that's not really language that you tend to use. Um, what you need to be thinking about is a good where there is an information gap leading to overconsumption of the good. So your first step is to draw that diagram. Remember to use uh, the marginal social benefit, marginal social cost approach rather than simply demand and supply if you can. And then once you've drawn your diagram, adapt your diagram to show how an indirect tax could be used to reduce the market failure. So just take a minute to do that. 
before restarting the video and taking a look at what we've already drawn for you. So we've got that there on the screen now. Um, we've labelled our marginal private benefit curves as perceived and actual, focusing on that issue of information failure. It will be absolutely fine if you'd label the right-hand MPB curve as marginal social benefit. Um, you'd have had exactly the same effect. So just take a moment to stop and check your diagram against ours. This one is slightly trickier than the previous example of negative production externalities. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of the first online lesson on indirect taxation. We are going to be producing another one, focusing on the skill of evaluation when it comes to indirect taxes and looking a little bit more at how we could use that concept in exam style questions and answers. See you there.